Now that we've finished learning about the physics behind how a car works, let's put it all together into one big coherent picture. A car uses its engine to convert chemical potential energy into the energy of motion, kinetic energy. In physics, we can describe situations in two different ways, in terms of the energy transformations and transfers that are taking place, or in terms of the forces acting on the system and the associated changes in momentum. After looking at energy, we had to look at how to describe the motion of an object. We saw the kinematic equations. These relate the velocity, displacement and acceleration of an object to time. We saw how these could be used to describe the path of a projectile as well as for a car which is undergoing constant acceleration. Newton's first law tells us that an object will only accelerate in the presence of an unbalanced force. Newton's first law explains why objects will move about in a car as it accelerates forwards. The objects, such as these marbles, are actually trying to remain at rest as the car accelerates forwards. This is also why seat belts are important. They ensure that the occupants accelerate with the car and are not flung forwards through the windscreen. Newton's second law tells us how large a force is required to accelerate at a certain rate. While Newton's third law tells us that while the road pushes the car forwards, the car pushes the road back the same amount. This push comes from the frictional force between the tyres and the road. We learned about how to describe the frictional force. It is proportional to the frictional coefficient and the normal force from the surface. We learned about why wheels are more likely to slip and the driver consequently lose control when the road is slippery with a smaller coefficient. We looked at a very important conservation law in physics, the law of conservation of momentum. This law applies whenever the external forces acting on the system are negligible. We can use the law of conservation of momentum to describe what happens when two cars collide. We learnt how cars have crumple zones. As these crumple, they increase the time of the collision and consequently decrease the maximum acceleration. Finally, we learned about circular motion. When an object travels around a circular path, it is constantly changing direction. This requires an acceleration. The object ex experiences an acceleration towards the centre of its path. If a car turns about a bend quickly, the occupant will keep moving in a straight line while the car accelerates below them and as a result they will move away from the direction the car is turning. Not great for occupants holding something that they don't want to spill. I hope that you have enjoyed this topic and that it has given you a better understanding of the sensations you experience while in a car.